From Santa Claus, to cute polar bears, to the World Cup. From a medical drink, to something that can be seen worldwide. Coca-Cola has dominated the world with a sugary, carbonated drink. But aside from its sweet and refreshing looks, there is an iceberg of mystery to the famous drink. Today at Finance Per, we'll talk about the dark secret of Coca-Cola. But if you're interested in new technology, financial scams, or business stories, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Coca-Cola was created by pharmacist John Stith Pemberton on July 1886 in Columbus, Georgia. It was first advertised as helpful relief for headaches and was placed in drugstores as a medicinal beverage. But the product was not yet perfect. This is where Frank Mason Robinson comes into play. He was Pemberton's bookkeeper, and he was credited as the early marketer of the product and the creator of the name and the logo. He named it Coca-Cola after two ingredients, coca leaves, the leaves that are used in cocaine, and cola nuts. It was a hit when it was released, and in 1892, the company was sold to Asa Griggs Candler, an American businessman, for $1,300, or about $44,000 in today's money. So what's dark with Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola did use coca leaves, but they stopped using cocaine from its formula in 1903 due to Jim Crow fearing that cocaine was contributing to black crime in the southern states. But even though Coke went cocaine-free, they continued to purchase coca leaves from Peru. They removed the cocaine in the leaves but used the leaves as flavoring for their products. During the 1960s, as the disco club scene was thriving, so does cocaine as a party drug. The war on drugs began in 1971 when President Nixon declared drugs as public enemy number one. And one of those enemies is cocaine. This is when Coke feared that their secret trade with the Peruvian cocaleros or cocaine farmers will be revealed. So they did the most unexpected thing. They began growing coca in the United States, with the help of the U.S. government, a New Jersey chemical firm, and the University of Hawaii. So how did Coke get to that point? Many experts call this Coca-Cola capitalism. This is when Coke began establishing connections with the private and public sectors. These connections in return allowed the company to buy raw materials at low cost. Coke also focused on a wider view, not only focusing on manufacturing, but also as a commodity broker and a facilitator of the exchange of ecological resources between producers and distributors. In return, generating profits in these transactions. Now, for the coca leaves, Coke is connected with New Jersey-based Stepan Chemical Company. They are responsible for the handling of Coke's coca trade and removing the cocaine in the leaves that are used for the flavor. Coke loved Stepan Chemical because they can keep a secret. They managed to keep Coke out of the spotlight and keep the use of coca leaves a secret. The government also played a part in the shade with Coke, and the Federal Bureau of Narcotics was the main actor. They helped run a Hawaiian coca farm and negotiated a deal with the Peruvian government to ensure Coke maintained access to coca supplies. What do you think about Coke's shady transactions? We want to know in the comments below. But for more videos about finance, technology, and business, don't forget to click that subscribe button and notify bell. Aside from coca leaves, Coke also takes advantage of its relationship with the government. Coca-Cola and the government go a long way. Coke bottles tap into public water systems that are maintained by the local government. They've also benefited from corporate lobbying in Congress. In 1970, 22 congressmen supported a bill that would have banned the sale of non-reusable beverage containers. But due to corporate lobbying, 
they abandoned the plan, and coke gained the upper hand. Coke is also a major pollutant. Annually, coke produces over 3 million tons of plastic packaging each year, including 110 billion plastic bottles. And coke has no plans to stop or reduce the production of plastic bottles, according to its global chief executive. Coke was labeled as the worst plastic polluter in the world. Coca-Cola has also come under fire for alleged violations of labor laws in its bottling facilities. Over time, multiple issues start to pop out. One issue is that Coke bottlers pay low wages, where workers receive little compensation for their labor. This has led to criticism that Coke was exploiting its workforce and failing to provide fair and just compensation. Poor working conditions also play a part. Reports suggest that Coke employees had to endure harsh environments, long working hours, and limited access to breaks and proper safety measures. Coke is also alleged to be a strong anti-union practitioner. They discourage workers and prevent them from forming and joining unions that protect their labor rights. These are just some of the issues that Coke is facing. But besides the criticism and its shady practices, Coke continues to dominate the market, having an astounding $264 billion in net worth. Coca-Cola is also sold to almost every country in the world except Cuba and North Korea. But if you want to know more about the Tesla Cybertruck or the Facebook story, don't forget to subscribe and click that notify bell for more videos about finance, technology, and business. This is Finance Spur. Have a great day.